Hello, welcome to the recording workshop. I'm Jose Gross. I do quite a lot of the teaching here, and I'm going to show you a little bit about the Korg MS20, a classic synth dating from around 1976, very rare now, and it's one of our prized possessions. So this particular synthesizer consists of two oscillators. You've got oscillator one and oscillator two. These are called voltage-controlled oscillators. Each one of these generates a particular waveform, and you have a choice of a few different waveforms on each one. So here we have, for instance, a triangle wave, uh, or a sawtooth wave, which is a much brighter sound made up of all the multiples of the, harmon um, of the basic frequencies, which are all the harmonics. Then we have square wave, which has a variable pulse width, so that we can start from a normal square wave. Which is going into a pulse wave with a very narrow uh, cycle, which gradually gets wider and louder. It's quite good for producing kind of phasing effects. And then finally we have white noise. Very good for sound effects like wind and rain and uh, waves and things like that. So if I go back to a sawtooth wave, which is a, a fairly bright sound, and underneath here we've got the scale control, which determines what octave we're playing. So it can go up to a four foot uh, waveform, which is a quite a high pitch, and each time we go down an octave, and one way of uh, understanding the cycle length uh, of the wavelength, rather, of these waveforms using the scale is comparing it to a pipe organ. So each one of these settings would correspond to the length of a pipe you'd get on a pipe organ, such as you may find in a cathedral. So this would need to be eight foot high, this particular pipe. Uh, this one is 16 feet high. And this one is a phenomenal 32 feet high. In order to be able to get naturally that kind of uh, octave or pitch. Then that's oscillator one, VCO one. And here we have a mixer, which enables us to control the volume level of both VCOs. So I'm going to turn VCO one down and then turn VCO two up. Very similar, uh, so we'll start off with a 16 foot scale. And that's a sawtooth wave. A square wave. And a pulse wave. So we don't have a variable pulse width on this particular VCO. We could either have pulse wave or square wave. And then we have the ring modulator, which links all the waveforms together, producing a great bell like sound. We've also got a pitch control. So this pitch control enables us to vary the pitch of VCO2 relative to VCO1. So if I'm going to set that to a sawtooth wave, and I'm going to have both VCO1 and VCO2 at the same scale, so they're both at 16 feet, and I'm going to turn VCO1 up as well as VCO2. Okay, it's a slight phasing effect because with analog synthesizers, it's not possible to get both oscillators perfectly in sync. But now I'm going to vary the pitch of VCO2. So it basically goes roughly two and a half octaves above the original pitch. And if I turn the control anti-clockwise, it'll go down two and a half octaves below the original pitch. You 
can use very slight detuning to change the character of the sound. It gives a bit more of a texture. And you have to bear in mind that the scale setting can make quite a big difference to the type of sound that you get. So, for instance, if I put both of these to uh, 8 feet, or 4 feet, VCO2, by the way, can go up to 2 feet, so it's an octave higher than a VCO1, quite high, but VCO1 can go an octave lower than VCO2, which is 32 feet. So we've got quite a lot of flexibility with the type of um, sounds we get with just a pitch. And in relation to pitch, we've also got portamento. Portamento controls the speed at which the pitch changes. So with, uh, at a time set to zero, the pitch jumps from one note to the other. But if we slow down the portamento... So you can see how the pitch changes at gradual speed. You have to be careful though that if you're playing a very fast pattern and your portamento setting is too slow, then you're not going to be able to hear the pitch of the individual notes. So if I play a, a little bit arpeggio here, okay, that's pretty easy to hear the individual notes. But as I slow down the portamento, it'll get harder and harder. And it's very true that particularly the way the synthesizers have been used over the last decade or so with dance music, is that the pattern of the music determines what you can do with the sound. So the slower the pattern, the more you can do with your sounds. The faster the pattern, the less flexibility you have. But, you know, it's just a case of adjusting the settings so that they work according to the timing of the pattern of the notes that you're using. OK, so that kind of covers one of the kind of basic aspects of using pretty much any analog synthesizer but what characterizes the MS-20 is the fact that it's got two oscillators. Most analog synthesizers don't, they only have one oscillator.